welcome to PyCon. Um, I know Stephanie through the, the local PyCon and tech community. And I'm really glad that you could, you know, have a chance to talk uh, about what you're doing. Um, maybe we can get started with uh, how did you start doing research and how did you start using uh, programming in your research uh, and what was your sort of inspiration? I studied uh, bioinformatics, so I use um, programming for my research since the beginning. But um, I came up with this because I was reading all these biology books and uh, learning a lot about biology. And then there was the Human Genome Project, um, mm -hmm. so people were sequencing the human genome. And I read that they use computers to puzzle it together. And then I got really interested in that because mm -hmm. uh, my dad's also a programmer, and as a kid I, I tried it out a bit. Have you always just been doing programming in a scientific context, or uh, did you become interested in, uh, in Linux and uh, in programming outside? I, I didn't do any programming before I started university. Okay. So I didn't do um, it in high school at all. I, um, I only did biology. Um, but I always used Linux before because my dad's a geek and he didn't uh, allow me to go on the internet without using Linux. So it was very funny. I had to learn all these uh, Unix commands and wrote them down as a kid <laughs> on a piece of paper. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, how long have you been at uh, Université de Montréal? Uh, I've been here as a postdoctoral researcher for two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with uh, Professor Francois Major. Mm -hmm. uh, we do um, RNA modeling. So RNA, it's like the little sister of DNA. It's a transcribed molecule, mm -hmm. and it can have a three-dimensional form. So we yeah. are trying to model how it folds. You know, um, this morning, uh, uh, both uh, keynotes uh, were talking about how there's a sort of a disconnect between the scientific and the education community and the programming, the, the tech community, and they were trying to bring that together. Uh, they're coming from the U.S., from the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, how much of that do you see happening in Montreal, in the, the university labs? I see even in the bioinformatics community that many people stick to the old tools and they are kind of a bit of reluctant to, to leave what they, what they already know. Yeah. So I'm trying to push that a bit in my own group. What are some of the tools that you're, they're using right now? Oh, right now I'm trying to convince everybody to uh, use Git, for example. Oh, okay. uh, Because people <laughs> used SVN before and they know that and that's what they like. Yeah. So, so stuff like that, just, just go getting on top of things, I mean, that's what we have to do all the time, right? Yeah. Why did you want to start writing a book about programming? Uh, oh, actually my, my friends were already having this idea of this mm -hmm. book. Um, that's like a different programming book, uh, which doesn't use the usual metaphors, for example. So they came up with this idea that uh, they use cooking as a metaphor for programming. And uh, they were coming up with the idea of the curry book, uh, which is um, uh, uses cooking metaphors to teach functional programming. So it's just mm. uh, teaching a programming style so and not what's a language. So uh, what's an e example metaphor? like? For example, the, the first uh, big program that we are building is a recipe generator. And oh. so um, you can, can generate recipes and we are starting out in an imperative style and then people are transforming it into the functional style. So we mm. are looking step by step how, how could we do it differently in the functional style? Can we do it more abstract? Things like that. And then it, as, as we have more functional pro, uh, concepts throughout the book, uh, like more complicated concepts like monads or stuff that the yeah. imperative programmer is not so familiar with. Mm -hmm. We still use the cooking analogies and then um, there's also recipes in the book. So if it's too theoretic, you can always cook something and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using cooking because it's girly or because it's interesting? I would say quite the opposite because I didn't come up with the cooking idea. I'm writing the programming part. Somebody else did the cooking part. <laughs> I'm not e even that good of a cook. But what I don't like about many programming books is that they are um, excluding people based on the examples that they are. Like, for example, there's many car building examples in programming books. Mm -hmm. If you ever read, like, many of the introductory books, they're always building cars. Why? I don't understand. I'm not interested in building cars, but everybody has to eat. So I yeah. think it's a good analogy because mm -hmm. it's not excluding anybody. And you're focusing on uh, just JavaScript and doing functional programming in JavaScript. Right. Um, okay. the, the idea is that people don't have to learn a new language to learn the concepts of functional programming. So okay. because many people already know JavaScript and it's more functional than many people think, yeah. we can explain all the concepts in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. um, the book is, is available right now in German? 
Yeah, it's right now in German. It came out with uh, O'Reilly Germany, mm -hmm. um, but we are currently translating it. We are about halfway done with the translation. Just last week I received a mail from the translator with lots of questions and uh, okay. then it will come out with no starch press, hopefully soon. <laughs>